YouTube, what the crap's going on? Era of Carthage here, back in uh, Total War Attila, almost Total War Rome 2. I uh, did so many online battles there that I almost can't get it out of my head. So, um, I got another replay for you, and I went back to the Sassanids again, which are kind of like a go-to for me, which is pretty self-destructive, since they're not a great faction. But you know what, that said, the Sassanids really, I think, can be underestimated in this patch, because they were so bad in the first patch. Um, they are not a great faction in the current state of play, but they are a, they're definitely more potent than they used to be, and, and there's a few reasons I think I've covered it. Let me just restate it. The Spa Bed General has some beastly melee stats here with good health and eight shots off of a bow, which can potentially be handy. Um, it is very expensive. The Savar and Sardar uh, also got better here, and is a pretty tanky unit for the price. Persian Nobles, they used to be kind of one of the better picks for the General. I don't know if they still are or not. I'd probably just go with the Savar and Sardar um, uh, over the, the Nobles, but I mean, these guys are mace-armed and these guys are sword-armed. But the nice thing about the Spabat is they got the heavy Spatha, and so they get some massive melee uh, and, the, and an 80 charge bonus. These guys can wreck the crap out of infantry. And with Brace, which is this uh, ability here, you get plus 9 versus Cav. Um, they can really dish out some damage against uh, certain Cav units. Now, you don't want to go head-to-head -head with, like, Elite Shot Cav or Elite Melee Cav for too long. But, I mean, if they're supporting that kind of fight, they can do okay. Uh, Sogdian Warriors, still very vulnerable to Missile Fire and not a real crazy strong unit. But if they were going up against units uh, that have high armor... Um, and low attack, they're actually pretty decent because they they flipped the melee damage. It used to be 5 armor piercing and 20 base, it's now 20 armor piercing and 5 base because they wield a mace as well. And with the 57 melee attack, they land hits pretty often. Their charge bonus though is pretty lackluster still, but typically there's no charge bonus on the type of units that they do best against, which are like the Romanesque type units. Now, don't be confused. Palatina or a Gothic Palatina or something like that, they will slash and hack the Sogrim Warriors to death almost instantly. Um, if you're looking for something more sturdy and tanky, the Elite Dalamite Warriors are a solid choice because they've got um, this discipline trait, so if your general dies, it's not as bad for them. They are quite expensive, but they're a pretty tanky unit, especially if you can get them in the shield wall. And then you don't have the discipline trait with the Dalamite Warriors, but again, if you can get these guys into shield wall, they're pretty handy, and then the two Javelins can be used to decent effect. Uh, Persian Brigade, of course, are more of a supporting unit. They have great attack stats for their price, but they're just very fl uh, flimsy. Archer-wise, you're in a lot of trouble. I mean, even their cheapest archers are kind of an overspin, so really I like to kind of stick to the Armenian Slingers if I want any skirmishing uh, power. They are very expensive, but the thing is these guys can eat skirmish fire like crazy uh, because they have an excellent missile block chance, um, for, and they have actually pretty good health for a skirmisher as well. Yeah, and then as far as cavalry-wise goes, the, the Sassanids have a lot of really weird cav. Um, the Persian scouts and the Lachman scouts are both utterly worthless uh, in multiplayer and don't serve a whole lot of purpose in campaign either. The price on these guys just needs to go down or change their stats, like something about them needs to change. These guys are, only have 90 speed too, which just sucks, like a scout unit with only 90 speed. So they're not even good at scouting in that regard, so it's just kind of a weird deal. Um, the Persian Mounted Warriors are pretty good for their price. Uh, they are medium, so they will get crushed by heavier cav on the charge, but you get decent stats out of these guys for sure. The Pajama Mounted Warriors here. Uh, Persian Camel Raiders are, because it's a raiding unit, it costs more and it's just worthless. Uh, decent health, but I mean for 725 you really get nothing here that's worth your while. Um, and the Camel Clip and Ari, these guys are fun to use, but again, very expensive. They scare horses, but you don't want these guys anywhere near horse cavalry because they don't have a spear. They've got an axe. Now, this would be a cool unit if they would spear arm it, um, and uh, then it might be kind of a fun unit uh, to use. It uh, doesn't have much of a charge bonus either, but, uh, you know, a pretty, pretty interesting unit. The Sobian Camel Raiders have insane health. But again, what's the point of this unit? It has almost no melee attack. It's very expensive, and what's it going to kill? Um, it doesn't have an attack versus cav. It has an attack versus infantry, but its melee attack is low because it's a raider unit. All raider units seem to get robbed of all potential melee attacks, so this unit is utterly pointless. So these are the things that hold the Sassanids back, but what units, again, like I said, that they do have are good. Persian Mounted Warriors, Griff Penvar, and Pushtegban Cataphracts, these guys are all beastly. Um, they're almost never worth the price, but Gaia and Avspar can lay down a beating like no other shot cab in the game. These guys are amazing. 
but again, the price is pretty prohibitive. And even these Persian Cataphracts and uh, Svaran Cataphracts can be handy. They're only medium rated, but you get decent stats for the price again on those. Um, and if they ever put uh, Parthian shot on these Svaran Cavalry, uh, GG to other Cav. Uh, because these guys can wreck enemy Cav, they just don't have Parthian shot, so you have no way to skirmish. Elite Svaran Cav, I'd, yeah, no, no purpose here either. So I think the biggest problem for the Assassinates, like half their roster is worthless. Uh, elephants aren't worth their price. Uh, never have been in this game, and at this point, if nothing gets changed, they never will be. Which is unfortunate, because they're the only faction that bring elephants. Naf throwers do have an interesting place. Um, which is weird is that they have huge melee attack. I don't know what weapon they're carrying that gives them such melee attack. And, uh, must be a mace. Yeah, they're carrying a mace. So, if these guys didn't get charged and got into melee, they don't have many men, but... But they would dish out some decent damage. And of course, their uh, naft pot can cause some damage. So, anyway, the Sassanids are an interesting faction. I just kind of wanted to recover them real quick because I think a lot of people underestimate them. And, uh, not, again, don't be taking this as to mean that I think the Sassanids are some kind of competitive power faction. If you're playing under rules that limit you to like a max 6 or 8 cav, the Sassanids are not going to be all that great. Um, but if you're not under those rules, and in fact, I would recommend to make the Sassanids more viable in tournament, that them, them and the Huns probably not get held to the same cav limits that the other factions do, because it would give them a more unique flavor. But at the same time, cavalry is so strong in Attila, I can understand why those type of rules make it into the tournaments. So I've brought the same army that I've used in a different video, and I think actually on the self same map as well. We've got six Griff Penvar, and they're being supported by four Persian mounted pajama warriors. And then, uh, let's see where my pajama warrior is at. They're somewhere over here, right here. No, that's not my pajama warrior. That's my spa bed. So I got a spa bed. Ah, here's my pajama warriors, right here. So, and then I've got four uh, Dialamite infantry and then four Armenian slingers. You can see, again, the shields on these guys. And that's what makes them so worthwhile. They have 175 range, which is nice. And they are very deadly, but their ammo is very limited and it has to be spent properly. Um, so again, I'm kind of lining up my grip pinbar on the flanks. My opponent is is uh, playing over here as uh, some uh, Allen spaghetti. Everything he has is spaghetti, except for his guys in loose formation up front. Like, max spaghetti. I don't know if these guys are quite max, but they're pretty close. Yeah, so... <laughs> I, I don't know what it is with spaghetti lines in this game. They... They are... Good in certain scenarios, but not in every scenario. So like, for instance, uh, my guys aren't doing great, but my Dialamite Warrior's having a few extra ranks here. If I go into Shield Wall, they might actually have some chance to brace against Cav. You go into any kind of defensive formation like this, and you still get wrecked. And Cavalry will wreck you, I mean, braced, unbraced, whatever, you're wrecked. Um, now, Cavalry will generally wreck your infantry anyway, but I mean, then you get it all spread out, and you got to be able to support it as well. Again, there's times to spread your infantry out, and it will work, but I think that a lot of people do it just for the sake of doing it, like, so, we'll see. Again, I, I see the point of it, and it definitely has uses. Uh, I have my slingers up front. My opponent's slingers are not in range, and I'm not quite in range of his slingers either, but I have no intention of firing his slingers. His slingers are not going to do anything to any of my troops, unless they can slow down my shock cavalry. Um, but they're certainly not going to hurt my Armenian slingers, and they won't do hardly anything to my Dialamite warriors. They could... But the Dialamite Warriors aren't really the real threat that I have for my opponent. It's my Griff Panvar um, and my Armenian Slingers that are the real threat to my opponent. And there are a few very juicy targets for my Armenian Slingers on the field. We got um, some, let's see, where are they at? Right here. Elite Agathersi Warriors. There's three of them that I can see. Yeah, three Elite Agathersi Warriors. And those guys are definitely Armenian Slinger bait, in my opinion. He wants to support his cavalry with Sarmatian Warband, which I think is a good choice typically against the Sassanids. Uh, but if he is spread this thin and takes his Noble Alani Cav into my Grivpan Var, they will get Grivpan owned on the charge. Like, bad. So bad that I'm not sure whether or not his Sarmatian Warband could even turn that fight around. And if his Sarmatian Warband ends up this close when they do get charged, they could potentially get beaten down by the Grivpan Var as well. So, Noble Alani Horsemen are very good, but he would be better off to go into a Diamond right now and try and deny my Griff Panvar of a good open charge. 
So that would be the best thing for him. Now, one thing I'm trying to do here, and I, I keep forgetting to turn my paint tools back on. Uh, I want to go head-to-head -head with his Noble Lani, despite the fact that they're supported, because then I want to whip my Persian Mounted Warriors around the flanks and get into the back of his supporting infantry, and I'm hoping that I can knock it all out. So I go ahead and start clicking attack orders, and uh, I'm just walking though, so it's a single-click attack order, so I can kind of get like a sudden, um, you know, painful assault here, and then I'm going to get my Slingers to start attacking his Agathirsi Warriors to try and draw him forward into a shield wall of Dialamites to waste some time. His pikes are absolutely no concern to me at the moment. So here comes the uh, the charges from my Griff Panvar all across the lines. I'll let you see it from the top here. And so right here is one slightly screwy charge. He goes for my Persian Mounted Warrior, so I don't get the best charge right here. So that's a bad situation. But you can see here his Noble Lani Cap just dropping like flies off the charge to the Griff Panvar. And he's throwing javelins into those fights as well. And look, uh, right here, he still loses 20-some-odd warband because, again, they were close to where my Griff Panvar charged. Noble Alani Cavalry just gets absolutely decimated by Griff Panvar on the charge. Uh, no question. So now I'm going to be swinging Persian Mounted around for support. And then I got in here. So again, he's throwing javelins and other stuff, which is probably hurting his own cav as much as it's hurting mine, so that's fine. On this flank, because the charges didn't go as well for me, it's obviously a problem, and I'm being chased by Sarmatian Warband, which is quite bad. I'm going to bring my spa bed over there to support eventually, but as you can see, this flank, he just gets smashed by my Griff Panvar and Persian Mounted Warriors, um, and his slingers aren't able to do much about it. These Griff Panvar uh, got in a little bit over their head here, didn't get a ton of kills and get cut down. I do charge into the back of these pikemen right before they died. Actually killed a couple of them. So, yeah, the one Griff Panvar didn't do good there, and then I've lost this one over here without doing a lot. My spa bed is going to come in right behind this Noble Lani Cav and kill it, but my opponent's going to wheel some infantry in uh, to support here, and he can also pull out these uh, Noble Lani Cav that are winning. So my spa bed is in great danger by doing this, uh, but I need to get rid of these cavalry units fast so that I can support against the others. This Griff Panvar is hanging on, and it did a good job, uh, considering it didn't get a good charge. So it held on for quite a while. So now, see, my opponent turns this elite or the Sarmatian warband towards my spa bed. I'm lucky this was not an elite Agathirsi warrior. But, I mean, just look at the wreckage that the spa bed can put on this unit. He's going to kill it all, and I'll lose a few of my horsemen. Um, but I mean, I'm just going to wreck that whole unit. My Armenian slingers are laying waste to his elite Agathirsi warrior. So I've made a couple of them combat ineffective here in the center. This one's been ruined, this one's been half killed, this one's been half killed, so my Armenian Slingers uh, having wrecked basically three of his elite Agathirsi warriors, and then my general just wiped out that uh, Sarmatian warband, but again, he's been severely weakened from a hit point standpoint. And here I've got a problem. These uh, Sarmatian warband are locked in combat with my two Persian mounted warriors, and if I pull out, I'm going to lose them. So I go ahead and decide to rear charge, even though I can see this noble Lani cap here. It's very dangerous for my general, but I need to do something about this Sarmatian Warband, and I know for a fact that my spa bed can kill them. This is a big risk, because my units are not disciplined. Um, my Griff Panvar isn't either, but they have better morale. So all these units here in the center aren't disciplined, and losing my general is a major risk. Um, so I'm trusting my spa bed here to help tank it out, and sure enough, I route the Sarmatian Warband with my spa bed, and it frees up some of my other units, and I can get these guys back in here. Although my general is going to eventually die in this fight, uh, but he does a great job. This Persian Mounted Warrior, I'm just chasing these Slingers, which eventually becomes unnecessary because they've been pushed so far from the fight. Uh, my Armenian Slingers have kind of goaded the, uh, the enemy... Uh, elite Ag Agathirsi forward, and they just continue to get hammered by slinger fire. So my slingers have killed a lot of elite infantry at this point. So definitely going well from that standpoint. Yes, my general dies, but he still put up a great fight against these noble Lani. But now the noble Lani are going to get hit by Griff Panvar and Persian mounted. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, yeah, my spa bed's gone. So I lose this unit over here too. Uh, I had a cab unit that shattered because of that. The enemy general here is unprotected by his pikes, and uh, he's going to get rear charged by Griff Penvar. My Griff Penvar are exhausted, which is going to help him, but his general still is going to eat it here. He's as good as dead, getting hit by Griff Penvar from behind. Two units of them, to be precise, and then I've got a Persian mounted warrior working its way through the center to get in. Now, my opponent said he had been dropped from the game at the end. Uh, I don't know whether he dropped or got 
lost his connection or whatever, but this is an example of how the Sassanids can potentially stand up to one of the power factions. But again, it depends on the rules. The rules would almost certainly ban what I have brought here in most tournaments. Um, but I kind of like if those rules can get bent for the Huns and the Sassanids, because then it makes some heavy cav builds with them more feasible and uh, allows them to play in such a way that they're more competitive against factions like this who wield better skirmishers, better infantry, and more solid melee cavalry. Um, anyway, it worked out good for me here. My spa bed did kind of um, clutch out a few key things for me, even though my general died. He, he went down with a, an amazing fight, uh, killing those Sarmatian, two units of Sarmatian Warband, basically, and helping to finish off a noble Lani Cav, so a very important unit here. And then a couple of my Griff Panvar, I mean, just crushed the noble Lani Cav they were opposite of. Uh, not a ton of kills on them in this game, but my Persian Mounted Warriors were able to come in and get some important kills. And then it's really my Slingers. Look at this, 114, 131, 95, and 73 for a 400 talent unit getting kills on Elite Agathersi. I like it. Um, in fact, I'm curious. It's good enough for me to make those guys combat ineffective um, just for the sake of. So if we go in here and... Let's see, so he picked the Allens. I'm surprised he didn't bring an Alani general. I was actually really concerned about running into an Alani general. He, he may have been scared that it would get hooked up with my shot cab during the game, which wouldn't be the best place for an Alani general. Um, but still, it's a tough unit. So Elite Aga Thirsty are 725, and so I have four slingers at so 400 talents, so 1600 talents that ruined uh, basically 2175 talents, so definitely worth it. So that's another target that Slingers are good at, and it's really because they don't have a missile block chance. So you see here, very poor missile block chance and low armor, which is what Slingers excel against. Um, and the Sarmatian Warband, low health. I don't know what their block chance is, but it doesn't look good. Or sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. They actually have pretty good armor. So yeah, see, it wouldn't be as good to be firing at these guys or the Noble Germanics, but both of these units are very... Uh, a danger, and so again, a lot of people bring the Germanic archers. They're good units, um, and my opponent, my opponent didn't bring them here. He brought hurlers instead, which is fine. You can slow down enemy shock cav with them, but uh, in this case, he wasn't really able to do it, and his hurlers didn't end up paying off for him. But I mean, they're cheap units, and if you can get them to get any kills, uh, a lot of times it'll be worth it. Or just to even draw enemy fire or slow down enemy cav or infantry can be worth it. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed this. I love using the Sassanids. It does not always go well when I use the Sassanids, but I still like using them. I, I like them because they're kind of a break-the-mold faction in Attila. They're quite different. And anyway, Heir of Carthage, signing off for now.